Welcome back to my channel. Today we continue chapter 2 forces and motion 1 on topic 2.1 linear motion part 2. So in this video I will discuss on ticker timer and photo gate. A ticker timer is a device used to analyze motion. If you look at diagram here, this is a ticker timer that you can find in the lab. Okay. It consists of a vibrating plate and there's a sharp end here. So once you on the ticker timer, the vibrating plate will vibrate and the sharp end will knock on the ticker tape and produce dots. So this one, how it uh, functions, we connect it to an alternating current. It cannot function by using direct current. So a ticker timer is an electrical operated device that marks very short intervals of time on a tape in the form of dots. So you can see here. Eh? A long tape is attached to a moving object and threaded through a device that places a dot on the tape at regular intervals of time. So the frequency normally is 50 hertz. So once you connect to the alternating power supply, so you can see the vibrating plate vibrates, thus you can see dots produced. Due to the frequency of 50 Hz, it will produce 50 dots on the ticker tape in one second. But in our calculation, in order to calculate speed, velocity or acceleration, normally we don't use the dots. We use the term tick. What is the meaning of tick? Here, one tick is defined as the time interval between two adjacent dots. So this one is count at one tick yeah, between two dots. Okay, so you look at here, this is a one ticker tape. How many ticks consist of on this uh, ticker tape? If you just count dot, how many dots we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. There are six dots. But between two adjacent dots, we count as one tick. So this is one tick, one tick, one tick, one tick, one tick. So meaning there are five ticks all together. So based on the direction of motion of the ticker tape, the direction is to the right, meaning the first dot on the right will be the first dot. So that, that's why this one become the first tick. And this one is the last tick. Okay. Displacement over 5 ticks period is from the first dot to the final dot. So based on this ticker tape, it consists of 5 ticks. How can we determine the 1 tick? 1 tick depends on the frequency. So if we look at the frequency here is 50 Hz, meaning 1 tick equals to 1 divided by 50 or equals to 0 0.02 second. Here we have 5 ticks, thus the total time taken for this ticker tape equals to 5 ticks or 5 times 0 0.02 second, that is equals to 0 0.10 second. If you calculate for 10 ticks, meaning 10 times 0 0.02 second or equals to 0 0.2 second. So we are going to use tick in order to calculate uh, for uh, distance, displacement, speed, velocity, or acceleration. So based on the ticker tape that <clears throat> we get uh, from the by use from the activity uh, when you use a ticker tape uh, and ticker timer, so we can analyze motion based on the dots that produce. So look at the first one a. Direction of motion is to the left, meaning the first dot produced is the one that at the left side. So this is the first dot produced. So from the first dots, you can look at what happened to the distance between two dots. So the distance between two dots are constants. So this one, we call it constant tick length. So what can we infer from the ticker tape? Or what we can conclude from the ticker tape? Meaning the object is moving with constant or uniform velocity. Now we look at B. Also direction to the left. 
So this one is the first dot. So from the first dot to the final dot, you can see the distance between two dots increases. So characteristic, thick length increases uniformly. Okay, so inference based on the dots produced on the thicker tapes. So this object is moving with uniform acceleration. Now you look at C. Direction still to the left. So this is the first dot. So you can see distance between two dots decreases. So thick length decreases uniformly. So inference, the object is moving with uniform deceleration. So you just look at the distance between two dots in order to state the type of motion because uh, the value of time taken between two dots is always constant. Okay, just now we have discussed one tick equals to 0 0.02 second. No matter how long uh, the distance between two dots, the time taken still the same. 0 0.02 seconds. That's why when you want to determine what type of motion based on the ticker tape, you just look at the distance between two dots. Okay, here another two example. So we have two ticker tapes here. Both ticker tape consists of 10 ticks. You look at the first one, distance between two dots is shorter. The second one, distance between two dots is longer. So what can you say about the type of motion of the object based on these two ticker tips? Look at the first one. So distance between two dots shorter, meaning the object is moving with lower speed. And this one shows distance between two dots are constant also uh, shows that constant velocity or constant speed. Okay, second one. Distance between two dots longer, meaning higher speed. And then the distance between two dots also constant, meaning constant speed or constant velocity. So from the ticker tape that produced, we can analyze motion. We can determine the value of speed or velocity or acceleration and also can state the type of motion of the object. Okay, look at uh, how we produce a ticker tape chart. Let's say we have a very long ticker tapes produced from the activity maybe consists of more than 50 ticks. So actually, from the ticker tapes that produce, we can make a tape chart. How to make a tape chart? So what we do, we cut out six strips of 10 ticks ticker tapes. You just count from initial point. Eh? You can cut exactly on the dots. And then you count 10 ticks, you cut, you get first strip. And then you continue to cut another 10 ticks. Continue until you get six strips. Okay, so actually you can uh, you can uh, cut uh, more than six, uh, ten or fifteen, up to you. But this one I just discussed about six strips. Okay, so once you have a six strips of ten thick sticker tapes, paste the six strips side by side to form a tape chart. It's like a graph. Huh? Okay. So you can uh, draw an uh, axis uh, to represent length of ticker tape of distance and then time taken. Then you paste all the ticker tapes, uh, the six strip, side by side. Okay, so this one we call it tape chart. Actually, from the tape chart, we also can determine speed, velocity, distance travel, uh, acceleration, okay, uh, based on the tape chart. So for this 10 tick length, the time taken equals to 10 times 0 0.02. So the time taken is 0 0.2 second. So meaning the first trip, time taken 0 0.2, second also 0 0.2, third also 0 0.2, fourth 0 0.2, fifth 0 0.2, sixth 0 0.2. Because the time taken for one tick is always constant. 
Okay, based on the tape chart that produced, we can also analyze type of motion based on the tape chart. We look at the first one here. Okay, when you cut out the six strip and you, you paste it side by side, you can see all the strip are in same length. So in this uh, kind of motion, all stentix length are of the same length, meaning distance between two dots are constant. So this one we call it uniform velocity. When uniform velocity, the object does not accelerate or we call it zero acceleration. Okay. And then the second one here, you can see the length of the ticker tape increases uniformly. Okay, so the length increases uniformly, showing that distance between two dots also increases uniformly. Thus, velocity increases uniformly, so we call it uniform acceleration. And the third one here, you can see the length of strip decreases decreases uniformly, meaning the distance between two dots decreases. So velocity decreases, we call it uniform deceleration. So based on the ticker tape or tape chart, we also can determine the, uh, determine the type of motion. So in your textbook, that's activity 2.1, you can refer to your textbook. So aim of this activity is to use ticker tape to determine displacement, velocity and acceleration of trolley. Apparatus needed, ticker timer, trolley, runway, alternating current power supply, retort stand and wooden block. Material, ticker tape and connecting wires. Instruction, so we set up the apparatus as shown in figure 2.12. Raise one end of runway slightly so that trolley can move slowly down the runway. So here, you can just increase or decrease uh, the height of the trolley. Attach a 100 centimeter of ticker tape to the trolley. Switch on the ticker timer and release the trolley. Observe the ticker tape obtained. From the ticker tape, determine displacement and calculate average velocity of the trolley. Raise the end of the runway further so that trolley moves with higher velocity down the runway. Repeat step 2 and 3, then calculate acceleration of the trolley. Rearrange the apparatus shown in figure 2.13. So we have next one. Push the trolley from the bottom of the runway and allow it to stop, uh, to move up, sorry reverse direction. Stop the trolley when it starts to descend the runway. From the ticker tape obtain, obtain, determine deceleration of the trolley. Discuss pattern of motion obtained on the ticker tape. So the first activity we want to observe what happened when we increase height. So you can see the trolley move down uh, at higher velocity. So we can determine the velocity, average velocity or acceleration. And then we move it uh, reverse direction so the trolley will decelerate. So from the ticker tape that produced, we will calculate uh, the velocity or acceleration of the trolley. So look at some sample of calculation problem. So let's say we have this ticker tape. Okay, so this ticker tape consists of how many ticks? One, two, three, four, five, six, six ticks direction is to the right, meaning this one is the first dot. It's very important eh, to detect which one is the first dot and final dot because you are going to calculate initial velocity and final velocity in order to calculate acceleration. So remember the formula for acceleration A equals to final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time taken for one, time taken for change in velocity. So look at this situation. The ticker tape figure above was produced by a toy car moving down a tilted runway. If a ticker tape timer produced 50 dots per second, find acceleration of the toy car. So the word 50 dots per second means one tick equals to 0 0.02. Okay, look at the answer here. Number of ticks n equals to 6. 
initial velocity where we should calculate initial velocity so this is the first tick so you calculate here not here so based on the direction to the right this is the first dot meaning this one is the first tick this one is the final tick okay so initial velocity u 3 divided by 1 tick 0 0.02 second so we get 150 centimeter per second Final velocity, 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.02 seconds. So we have 25 centimeter per second. Thus, use the formula of acceleration. The time taken is time taken for change in velocity. In order to calculate <clears throat> time taken for change in velocity, number of ticks, uh, minus 1. You need to minus 1. Multiply t, or time for 1 tick. Okay. So based on this, you can see a equals to 25 minus 150 divided by 6 minus 1. So, you always minus 1 for acceleration. Huh? So, 6 minus 1 times 0 0.02. So, you get negative 1250 centimeter second negative 2. So, the unit here should be negative 2. Huh? Yeah. So, this one is for one uh, ticker tape, six strip of ticker tape. Let's say we have a tape chart. So this tape chart consists of five strips. Uh, strips uh. One strip consists of five ticks. So meaning time taken for one strip is five times 0 0.02. That is 0 0.1 second. So one strip, 0 0.1 second. So the first strip, okay, here the length is 5 cm. Now we want to calculate initial velocity. So initial velocity, you calculate from the first strip. The final velocity is the last strip. Okay. So number of ticks n equals to 5. Okay. For each of the strip, eh, number of ticks is 5. So the time taken 0 0.1 second. So initial velocity u equals to length 5. Read from here. Divide by time taken eh, for one tick, one strip, 0 0.1. So we have 50 centimeter per second. Final velocity, the last trip, the length is 1 cm. So 1 divided by 0 0.1 equals 10 centimeter per second. So acceleration equals to V minus U divided by T. So the time taken for the tape chart is number of strip minus 1 multiplied time for 1 strip. Okay, so here we have 5 strip. So 5 minus 1 times 0 0.1 so you substitute the value of v and u thus we get negative 100 centimeter second to negative 2 so this one we get negative value meaning the trolley is moving with deceleration uh, down the slope okay so this is how we calculate uh, for the ticker tape that produced from the activity Okay, next, the second device that used to analyze motion, we call it photogate. So, photogate system is used together with electronic timer. So, other than ticker timer, photogate system and electronic timer can be used to study linear motion more accurately. So, photogate actually is more accurate. Why? The use of autogate system and electronic timer is more accurate because no ticker tape is attached to the trolley. As such, there will be no friction between ticker tape and ticker timer that will affect motion of the trolley. Okay, so this one will cause the trolley to slow down. So its actual, actual uh, speed of trolley may be a bit slow, a bit uh, smaller due to the friction uh, between ticker tape and ticker timer. Now when you use photogate, no more friction because we don't use ticker tape here. We use electronic timer to record time taken. So an electronic timer can measure time interval to accuracy of 0 0.001 second. Very small value can be uh, measured uh, by using electronic timer. Uh, timer. As compared to the ticker timer, just until 0 0.02 second. So this short time interval enables us to determine velocity and acceleration of the trolley more accurately. Okay, so this is more accurate than ticker timer. 
So this diagram, you can see a photo gate. So this one is a photo gate. This one is electronic timer. Okay. This one is a trolley, non-motorized trolley. There's a weight put in, in order to increase or decrease the mass. And there's a shutter plate here. So you can see how we arrange uh, at the runaway. We put two photo gate. There's a first photo gate here. And this one is the second photo gate. So what you do, we just release the photo gate from the first photo gate until reach the second photo gate. And then record the time taken okay, here from the electronic timer. Okay. <clears throat> that one you can uh, determine uh, the time taken T. And then what we do, we remove the first photo gate and then release uh, release the trolley to pass through the second photo gate and record the time taken. So the time taken will be recorded as delta T. Short time interval, delta T. Okay, so you can repeat the experiment by increasing uh, or in increasing uh, the distance between the two photo gates. Okay, look at the result of this experiment. So the distance or separation between two photo gates we can set as uh, 40 uh, centimeter at first and then we can increase it to become 50, 60, 70 and 80. Okay, for the first activity you use two photo gate. You release the trolley from the first photo gate until reach the second photo gate and record the time taken. Okay, so let's say this is the answer 1.701 so you continue by increase the distance of separation between the two photo gates and then you record the time taken so this is a uh, one sample of answer so this one is the total time recorded when we use two photo gates next we remove the first photo gate and let the trolley to pass through the second photo gate Okay, and record the time taken as delta T. Let's say this is the answer or the result. Okay. So now we calculate final velocity and acceleration. Final velocity just occur at the second photo gate. So we use S divided by delta T. Okay. So calculate all the values for the final velocity. Meaning 40 divided by 0 0.099. Eh? This one 50 divided by 0 0.091. 60 divided by 0 0.084. 70 divided by 0 0.078. 80 divided by 0 0.074. So we get this value. For the final velocity okay and then you calculate acceleration meaning for the whole motion starting from the first photo gate to the second photo gate so we use the time taken as t you calculate as 40 divided by 40 divided by 1.701 and then 50 divided by 1.844 60 divided by 2.111, 70 divided by 2.242, 80 divided by 2.278. Okay, so this is one sample of answer. You can try in the lab huh, in order to check uh, the, the, the answer, whether it's same or not. So based on the results in the table, determine average acceleration of the trolley. And then when S increase from 40 to 80, the total time T increase, but the time interval delta T decrease. Why? Okay, now you want to answer the first one. So the average acceleration, we just calculate average of this value. Okay, so we just total up and divide by 5, so we get 29.25 centimeter second negative 2.
and then number two when s increase from 40 to 80 total time t increase but time interval delta t decrease y okay so uh for this one number two the value of t increases why the total time taken increase because longer distance takes longer time taken so you can see this one 40 uh, cm 50 cm 60 cm 70 cm 80 cm of course the time taken will be longer but why the value of delta t decrease the value of delta t actually is to determine the final velocity so when s increase the value of delta t decrease because the trolley is moving with constant acceleration. We put the trolley at the same height of trolley. So meaning, even you change the distance between two for the gate, actually the trolley is moving with the same constant acceleration. So if the, if the value of acceleration is constant, meaning delta t need to be decreased eh? based on the formula okay so based on this one eh? so that's the answer for this one so i think for this uh, uh, part i will stop here so you can check uh, more exercise on this topic involving uh, ticker tapes and ticker timer and also photo gate so if you can uh, carry out this activity in the lab, that one will be better so that you can see clearly what exactly happened. So we'll stop here. Bye.